Great. All right. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, welcome for another weekly community sync and demo. Uh, today, we have a couple of topics. Uh, if you're paying attention on the repo or uh, what we've been doing on our side, we released uh, a patch uh, just yesterday. Um, so we'll kind of go through some of the contents of that patch, why that patch was necessary. Uh, we have Tommy to talk about a couple of those, a couple of those items. Um, and then we have a demo from Lars on the line um, who has been working on sort, uh, category sorting. Uh, and then we'll kind of open it up to anybody that's on the line, questions, um, topics. Jordan, I think, also has a topic who just joined us. So um, let's get started, though, with Tommy on... Same <laughs> work. <laughs> That thing works. Yeah. Should work. We'll see. You never know with blue jeans. You never know. You're recording. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're L comes before T, man. <laughs> I didn't know that we ever did things alphabetically, but. Oh. Alphabets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so, uh, yes, in the scope of this patch release that we did, uh, it initially was a big uh, Chrome bug fix. I think we talked about that last week. Um, I don't think anything changed with the actual fix. I think we were running into, like some Safari thing, but I think Fastly was responsible for that. So uh, this bug fix is good, visibility hidden, rocks. Um, but we found another thing that we wanted to slip in there. It was more just about like best practices and kind of like, um, let's call this like, huh, I didn't know that's how that worked, Tommy, corner, minute. Um, so <laughs> we... <a> graphic. <laughs> Somebody get, get work done. Um, so uh, we are uh, heavy users of uh, Apollo and kind of two, two kind of little extensions of Apollo that we use are in-memory cache, and then we also use Apollo cache persist. Um, so uh, Lars is very familiar with this. He created a PR because um, he was having issues with this fancy uh, Apollo um, uh, dev tools that you can have. And this gives you a nice um, access to Apollo's in-memory cache. This is usually something that's very privileged to access. If I went to um, develop.pwa, uh, I should not, oh geez, <laughs> I should not expect to see uh, that Apollo link, because that is very privileged information, uh, being able to see uh, what's in the Apollo cache. Uh, but we are also um, kind of help with the, the concept of PWA. Uh, we're using uh, uh, cache persist, where this cache gets persisted to local storage. So um, before, if you didn't even have this Apollo extension, you could go into your local storage, See this big Apollo cache persist object, which has a bunch of fun stuff in it. Um, so we just kind of um, right at, at in 5.0, we started making heavy use of Apollo and kind of just we wanted to make sure that we put our best foot forward and kind of make everyone aware of these best practices that when you are using Apollo in the way we are with these two um, different extensions, you want to be uh, very aware of the fetch policies that you're doing. So um, there were a few areas where um, Apollo was just kind of over caching and there's kind of this edge case where if you're on a public computer, somebody could maybe tap into this cache um, or uh, if cross-site scripting uh, infiltrated your site, they could maybe access this cache. So uh, you should just be very uh, aware that like any mutations that you have in here that have um, kind of these default cache policies may show up in here. So if there's anything sensitive that you don't want showing up in this cache, uh, you just need to um, use a no cache policy. Then it won't show up. Um, that has that has some performance implications where Apollo is going to hit the network every time it needs that data. It won't use its kind of backend Redux cache to kind of uh, improve performance there. But that's the trade-off you have to make. Like security always wins. Um, don't cache anything that you wouldn't want kind of exposed to any other public people. So uh, that's probably like catalog stuff. Catalog stuff is fine, but uh, when it comes to like checkout and user information, uh, you want to make sure that you're setting the appropriate cache policy. 
Um, but I think uh, Mr. Terranova working on an internal blog post, maybe it'll become like a public customer facing blog post as well. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping it will. I'm writing it that way. Uh, yeah, because we identified a lot of potential solutions to this problem. So the one that we chose, uh, you know, may not necessarily be the one that you want to choose. So uh, it's got all the pros and cons and stuff of each in there. So I'll, I'll uh, share that out with them when I'm done. For sure. And what I'm allowed to share, don't I? I guess I should say. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. So yeah, there are kind of two things here. Uh, I think the big one was um, when you are setting up uh, your mutation, uh, all you got to do is just make sure that um, uh, so that's a sign out mutation. Yeah, you want sign in or create? <laughs> um, so here, here's an example. Uh, this is a Redux action, but if you didn't want something to be cached, all you do is patch, pass the fetch policy of no cache. And then uh, in this blog post, uh, I think we're still firming up what our kind of suggested solution is. It doesn't affect Venia right now, um, but there is a weird um, uh, default behavior where when it does cache root mutations, like sometimes you may want to cache the mutation uh, we suspect there's like an offline replay functionality here that like we're not taking full advantage of. Um, but if you still want to cache those mutations, there might be a way to kind of just change how those those keys uh, are set in the cache, and then that kind of like removes uh, any vulnerability entirely. But um, Vinia is safe. Um, it if you were using Apollo, your app is probably safe. Um, so just it's just kind of just best practices that we wanted to put out there now that we we are kind of using Apollo as uh, kind of a first class data fetching um, in our app. So um, take a look at that patch release. It's pretty simple. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know. <coughs> awesome. Yeah, um, the patch release or the release notes are updated. Mr. Cockerman has, uh, has done that and merged it uh, this morning, right? So if you go to our releases page in GitHub, you'll see the uh, two bugs that Tommy just covered quickly the image uh, issue that we talked about during the last community sync and then uh, the update for this, this issue um, in those release notes. So, any questions from anyone on the line? Oh, you got to see a little preview of. Cart edit item there. Oh, look at yeah. that, huh? Gotta clean up the desktop <laughs> before you before you demo. No questions? Cool. Well, uh, I think internally that was uh, that took up the, a good majority of our week in terms of things that we wanted to we were prepared to demo. So uh, Jordan, if you're online, if you have community corner uh, topics. Um I think Lars wanted to show something. Um, let me check. Yeah, he's here. Just make so, sure Lars, right if you will. Agenda, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Lars is coming in. J becomes 4L. You're good. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Alphabetic order. Okay, then I will uh, start with my. Uh, oh, this is new. I cannot share my desktop. Oh, why? Okay, I need some extension. Maybe it works now. Oh, okay. So I can share. Uh, you should see my screen now. Yes. Can, can, yes. Okay. Cool. So um, the last, uh, I think, two weeks or some days in the last two weeks, I was working on a sorting feature for. For Venier, um, it was a little bit more work that I expected there, but it goes really well. Um, short information is my first React component, and it's my first thing what I did in an open source project uh, with React. And yeah, I learned a lot, and um, it show. It doesn't not so much, but it does many things behind because it fetching um, the data uh, of the category page. It sends um, the 
the correct uh, GraphQL query to the server and re-render the category page. So uh, what I did there is I create a new component, um, um, a category, um, and I extend um, the category a root component there. It's uh, I add there uh, my component and uh, register it. So uh, for that reason, um, uh, this is a test, this is a test, this is a CSS, not relevant. So, uh, uh, yeah, many comments there. Maybe I should show my uh, WebStorm or something like that. Um, my point there, uh, what I did wrong or I didn't understand was, um, is uh, how I can uh, put um, uh, a click handler from the main page to my component because what I need uh, is um, a child item that will change the sorting of the category page. For that reason, I have um, registered some available the sort methods like best match is uh, sort by attribute relevance and uh, sorting uh, from high relevance down to low relevance. And uh, with this property, you can extend your own uh, sorting methods if uh, the attribute is sortable over GraphQL. It's, um, yeah. Uh, this is mostly all. If you if you like, you can take a look on a on a pull request or on a on a feature system. Uh, thank you for your time. Cool. All right, thank you. Uh, hey Lars, I have a question. Lars, thank you so much, folks. Lars has been uh, really diligent and really patient, and this looks awesome. So thank you so much for working hard to contribute. Yeah, I can chime in as well. You know, I I um, worked a lot back and forth with him on this particular PR. You know, had a lot of uh, rounds of feedback here. Or had I left, you know, dozens of comments on it, right? Um, and this is one of those cases where uh, we had a feature that we needed, right, that was small, uh, but we had UX feedback in the beginning, right, that required some rework, and he incorporated that, and then... Uh, there were particulars, as you all know, about how uh, patterns we use in the code base, right? Minor React optimizations, tricks to memoization, right? Like there's a lot of uh, small things to know about how exactly we write code uh, in this particular code base. And uh, in each of the cases, Lars either just incorporated the feedback straight away or, you know, figured out what we were talking about and, uh, and figured out how to rewrite it. And so... That's how we got to this PR work being approved, you know, being shown off today. All right. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lars. Yeah, very um, cool. I don't think we have anything else on the agenda. So. Stephen, you had a question for Lars? Or you? That's okay. Stephen just wanted to heap praise on Lars as well, so we'll just we'll keep up. So, uh, yeah, so Jordan, I guess uh, that's it for Community Corner. Uh, I would say also, I know it's been a big uh, topic of discussion kind of in the uh, community Slack as well as individual conversations we're having. I know uh, there are a number of you out there that are looking to contribute and looking for work to pick up. Uh, we have been working uh, along with Jordan, a community maintainer, to make sure that we define a good process for making sure we're curating uh, an amount of work um, that can be easily picked up. And Tommy, who's over here helping us now as our kind of community liaison, right? Um, Make sure we have a curated list of work that anybody in the community that wants to contribute can easily pick up. We have a full, we put together an initial view of a board that we'll start working against, um, and we're really working to kind of uh, uh, improve kind of the, the, the outline of the process before we introduce it um, on an upcoming call, and we start uh, kind of adhering to that process and uh, kind of contribution guidelines and things like that. So all of that is coming. It's on the way. Um, so ahead of time, we'd say thank you to everyone that, that is contributing. Uh, we welcome any contribu contribution in any form that we get it. Thank you for Lars for kind of the work on sorting. Um, but, and, and we're on a daily basis working to improve kind of the process of ensuring 
uh, 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 we can improve the community engagement and community contribution. So, uh, a lot of words just to say, we hear you. We are we are working to improve the process. Uh, and thanks all for for everyone for sticking around and, and being so interested in PWA Studio uh, and wanting to help out. Um, so that's it from my side, Mr. Zetlin or Jimmy. Do you guys got anything on the line? No, sir. Yeah, I'm not. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about, but uh, I would like to talk about it in chats and in issues, and only take time to do a speech at the community sync call when I've got something real simple and ready to go. That's my New Year's resolution. Great. <laughs> So simple Still and ready refining. to go things to come from, from James. All right. Well, then we will end early today, uh, and we'll see you all next week onwards and upwards. Uh, recording has ended. Uh, smash, don't forget to smash like and subscribe. Uh, honk if you like it. Uh, oh, my God, dude. Nailed it's getting better every week. Oh it's getting better every week. Nailed it. We're going to rehearse this. We're going to rehearse this. All don't right, forget, thanks, don't forget, shake and honk, shake and honk. <laughs> no, okay, bye. That's not one. That's yeah, not one. See you. Thanks, everyone. See you guys next week. All right, later, guys. Yeah. See you.